Notice how in today's gospel reading, our Lord makes an allusion to the Holy Spirit, how he says the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in his name, and the Holy Spirit will teach them all things and remind them of all the things that he said to them. And as we get closer and closer to the Feast of Pentecost, uh, there will be more allusions to the Holy Spirit in the Gospels, uh, in the Scriptures, so our Lord alluding to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, is the one who helps us. And when our Lord says that he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you, well, that refers primarily to the apostles, and they would establish the faith for all of us, but it also applies to us. So the Holy Spirit comes to us when we are baptized, but we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit when we receive the sacrament of confirmation. And it's a very important sacrament. And if an adult hasn't received the sacrament of confirmation, they should. It's very important. So receiving the sacrament of confirmation, receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, helps us to live out our faith, but it also helps us with the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. Who wouldn't want the help of God? Who wouldn't want the help of the Holy Spirit? So confirmation is extremely important. It strengthens us in our faith and enables us to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now notice in today's Gospel reading, our Lord says, he goes on to say, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. He's talking about peace. And he says the peace that he gives is not the kind of peace the world gives. So what's the difference? What is worldly peace? Well, we could probably say many things about worldly peace and certain different extent of, of worldly peace. So, I mean, we can talk about peace between Russia and Ukraine or just peace in general in the world. But most people, they would love to be at peace. But many people are not at peace. Sometimes they have conflicts with the people around them. And sometimes people do worry. Our Lord says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Often we have a troubled heart. Often we are afraid. We are worried. We're worried about many things. We worry about our health. We worry about the future. We worry about how we're going to make ends meet, how we're going to pay our, all our bills or provide for your family or even getting a new job sometimes. So there's many things that we worry about. But our Lord is saying, don't worry. Be at peace. So if we think of worldly peace, you know, worldly peace would consist of, you know, having no problems, which means that you would be in perfect health. You wouldn't have to be afraid of death, which means you would never die. You would have no conflicts, which means that you and everyone around you would would be perfect. You wouldn't have a fallen human nature. Because we do have a fallen human nature, we tend to have conflicts. We, we tend to commit sin. Others commit sin. So worldly peace would mean everybody's perfect. Nobody's going to get sick. Nobody's going to die. That's not reality. It's not attainable. It's not possible. And yet we all have a desire for peace. So the peace that our Lord gives is very different from worldly peace. The peace that our Lord gives does not depend on the circumstances we find ourselves in. It doesn't even depend upon our own health. It's something spiritual. And so it's something we can only have from God. And first and foremost, this, this peace that Christ gives is knowing that even though we are sinners, knowing that even though we have sin, our sins can be forgiven. Sometimes a person is not at peace because of the sense of guilt and shame for the sins that they've committed. We can be rid of that. We can just go to confession. God can forgive us. And we all know we're going to die. We might die in an accident. We might die after a long illness. And if we really trust in God, we shouldn't worry about that. We shouldn't worry about death. 
Yes, there is the reality of heaven and hell, but if we trust in God, if we have a good relationship with him, we don't need to worry. Sure, we may have to spend some time in purgatory, but we don't need to worry. We just need to trust in God. So death is not something we should be afraid of. And sickness or trials and tribulations in this life, well, those are things we have to deal with. I mean, think about it. Does worrying about it really make the situation better? In most cases, it doesn't. Why do we worry? We worry because we think we need to figure out how to solve this problem that we are faced with in the present moment. And we think it all depends upon us. What am I going to do? How am I going to fix this problem? And often we can't figure it out. So often we consult people in the world, you know, experts, which is good to give us advice. But so often people fail to consult God. So in other words, we need to trust in God no matter what. Now think back in your life, maybe when you were younger, maybe you had a big, huge exam and you were very worried, very anxious about it, or maybe your first date or something. I'm sure that in most people's lives there was some moment when you really worried, fretted about some, something. Now when we look back today, in other words, if we look back to that time when we were really, really worried or anxious about something, when we look back today, we realize I didn't really need to worry that much. It turned out okay. I got through it. Maybe it didn't turn out the best way, but I, I got through it. And that's kind of like the attitude we should have. In other words, we shouldn't worry. We should trust in God. And we should trust that God will provide us with what we need to either get through whatever difficulty we're faced with or to be able to deal with it in a suitable manner. And God gives us special aids or special gifts to help us with the difficulties, the challenges that everyday life brings to us. So I mentioned the coming of the Holy Spirit and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we receive when we are confirmed. Wisdom understanding, knowledge, right judgment or counsel, courage or fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. These seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Would you not want to be wise in your decision making? Would you not want to be knowledgeable and understanding? Well, of course you would. This is why we sometimes consult experts, as I mentioned. But these gifts of the Holy Spirit, they only work when we're connecting with God, when we have a good relationship with God. In other words, we need to root out sin from our lives. We need to be close to our Lord. We need to have a life of prayer. I can say from my own lives, there, from my own life, there's been times when I was kind of overwhelmed with certain thoughts or situations, and it's like I didn't know how to figure out how to deal with this problem. And it was eating away at me. It was just, I kept thinking about it. What am I going to do? How am I going to fix this? And then I would go and pray, in particular, praying the rosary. Praying the rosary is, is a, it's a wonderful prayer because it's repetitive. And that repetition calms you down. When you're anxious, you're, you're not calm. So we need to calm down. And when we pray the rosary, we're supposed to take our mind off our worldly concerns, and we're supposed to focus on the mysteries of the rosary, which is a good thing. So when we do this, we're connecting with God. And what I've noticed very often is that when I pray the rosary, even though I may not be thinking about those things that I was worried about, I get insights. I see things from a different perspective. It's kind of like, oh, now I understand. That's what I need to do in order to deal with this situation. So God helps us when we pray. God helps us when we are close to him, when we connect with him. Being at peace is a wonderful thing. It's something that we all desire. What are you going to do in order to assure that you have this peace that Christ offers 
to all of us.